Hello. It's time for another So What video. Waistcoat this time. We're doing this one that I'm wearing at the moment. We're not following a pattern, at least not a commercial pattern. We're using the same basic pattern as I used for the pink velvet waistcoat, which you'll have seen in a recent video, hopefully. If not, pop into the playlist and have a look around. You'll find it in there in one of the more recent videos. This waistcoat is made from another garment and it's quite tricky sometimes to make things from an existing garment. The reason for me doing this was I picked up a nice tweed jacket and unfortunately it had quite a bit of moth damage and it seemed to be a size bigger than it was labelled as. Foolishly, I didn't try it on when I was in the shop, so that's on me. Since it came from a charity shop, I wasn't about to take it back, and the tweed was still useful. The price of the jacket was so little, well, it goes into the fabric stash when it's that sort of thing. Now, if you pick up moth-damaged clothing, be sure to keep it separate from your other woolens until you're absolutely sure the moths have gone away. Uh, if you've got any sort of moth repellent, like mothballs or cedar wood blocks or any of the other types of moth repellent out there, keep that with the garment as well while it's separate. That way if there is any active moth stuff going on, it's not going to get into your other clothes, which you really don't want to have happen. Please don't forget to subscribe if you've enjoyed the content. There is a lot more content on the channel. And absolutely hit the like button if you've enjoyed watching what you've been watching and leave a comment let me know how you've got on with similar projects and ask me questions i'm always happy to help if i can sometimes what you plan to do with a garment and what you can actually do don't line up i was going to turn this into a waistcoat and i was going to use the pattern that I drafted recently for this velvet waistcoat I'm wearing right now. Now, technically, there is enough fabric in the front of this to do this, and I was going to reuse these pockets that are on here. The trouble is, the pockets are almost as wide as the pattern piece for the waistcoat. That's not going to work at all. The proportions, it, it's just, yeah. So my next option, before dismantling this whole thing, was can I adjust the jacket down into proportions that will actually fit me? And again, theoretically, yes I can. There's a few things I wanted to change. The length of the jacket. This is as long as I would want this sort of jacket to be on me. And this is how long it is. And again, the problem becomes how far down the jacket these pockets end up being, they're nearly at the bottom of it and it just doesn't look right. So what can I fix on this? What do I know is wrong on it? The main thing that's wrong is this portion of the coat is just too wide. I'm, I'm just not as wide as this. So when I put it on, I look like a small child wearing its parents jacket. So it's not a good look. There's a couple of ways you can fix this. One of the easiest is to take the seams that exist on the jacket. This one does have a centre back seam and I can take quite a lot of fabric out of that. It also has these side seams here which I can take in to get it lined up with my waist. The trouble is, even with taking all of this out the back, it's still too wide across the shoulders for me. On the front, there's enough fabric that I could make it double-breasted. But when you do, you fall into the same problem with these pockets just being the wrong size and the wrong location. It looks very strange. So the other way to possibly correct the way the jacket looks is to move the buttons. This is just two buttons, as you would normally have on a modern jacket. If I move them up, it reshapes the lapel. This area actually looks okay on me. 
but it's still much too wide. So I would need to take this much fabric off the shoulders. That's much too much. So what to do? You'll have to excuse some of the mess in the background here. I'm halfway through organising in all sorts. That time of year. Here's a, just a bit of a closer look at the jacket and how I've corrected the front of it. Now normally the lapel point here is down here. And because these lapels haven't really had any special treatment, you can just move that point up and it changes the lapel shape. That's more in proportion for me. At the bottom, when I lift the hem of the jacket up, you can see how massive these pockets would be on me. I'd need to take out an inch. And because of the style of pocket, that's not easy. There's also, from this point where the pin is, a seam that runs right through that pocket. So it's quite difficult to adjust that. And ahead of it, Starting around about here, there's a dart that runs all the way up, almost, to the breast pocket up here. So actually adjusting those pockets to fit me is going to be quite difficult. The other issue is the sleeves, which are too long. So I'd have to turn up that much of the sleeve to get the sleeves to fit me. And for the shoulders, the shoulders on this jacket, I need the seam here to be here. If I move this seam over this way, that's about how much I need to make the sleeve shorter anyway, so that would correct that issue. On the back, you can see we've got the side seam here and here. They're easy to take in. And the centre seam at the back is also fairly easy to take in, until you get to the collar. Because the collar's one piece, this seam stops on the body and all of the collar here, there's no seam in it. So you'd have to either put a seam in the back of the collar, which isn't ideal, or you'd have to detach the collar completely, resize it and sew it back on. None of this is particularly ideal. To give you some idea of how the problems actually look on me, because the garment does look different on a body than it does on the mannequin, I've put it on with all the pinned adjustments in place. You can see immediately why I want this to be shorter. My waist is about here. And the trouble is, well, they're not in frame, but my knees are just below the bottom of the frame here. And the jacket falls at a funny point. It's sort of, it's kind of half thigh. And it's not a good look on me with this style of jacket. The other thing you can see is this is the sleeve that I've shortened and this is the one I haven't and it's just, that one looks okay but this one's just much too long. Now the lapel, I quite like how that sits, you just get the little bit of the waistcoat showing above it and I quite like that, I think that area is quite good. I don't mind from about this point down. I think that line there is okay, but the back, it's not, it's not great. And the other problem is when I move my arms, it's not comfortable. They're just, there's just so much work in this. To adjust this jacket to fit me, I basically have to dismantle the whole thing and start from scratch. And that's before we get into patching the moth damage on the sleeves. And honestly, if I'm going to build the jacket from scratch, I'd rather it be in an exact tweed that I actually want, rather than this tweed which I just happen to like. So what shall I do with it? With no tailoring at all on this jacket, you can see how much too big for me it is. I made the mistake of trusting the label. It just hangs off me. It's not a good look at all. It's far too big. And it's not that this is an overcoat style, so it's not like it's supposed to be a size up to go over your other jackets. This is supposed to just be a normal jacket 
that goes over a shirt and waistcoat as I'm wearing it here. I mean, my waist, my natural waist is about here. The jacket's natural waist feels like it's about here. Since I know I shan't be using this jacket whole, I want to take it apart. This will allow me to see how much material I've got to work with. There's a number of ways you can do this. I want to save as much material as possible, so I'm going to find out where the seams are and actually cut the seams. If you've got lots of material and you're not worried about saving every single scrap, you can just cut along the fabric. It's a lot quicker. Doing it this way is a lot slower. The tricky part is figuring out which seam to start with. Because there's a lot of them, and because this jacket's in reasonably good condition, there's not really any easy way into it. On this one though, you can see if I pull on the fabric there, you can just see the stitches. So I will take this one apart here, and that will allow me access to the inside of the jacket where the seam should be a lot more visible. There's a number of different tools you can use for this. I'm using some good sharp pointy scissors. Some people prefer thread rippers. I find I have a bit more control with these. Work with whatever works for you. I don't know whether or not I'm reusing the lining material. It's in good shape, so it would be a good thing to use for, say, lining the waistcoat if that's what I end up having enough fabric to do. And I hold, put my hand in and spread my fingers apart to put tension on the seam. I can then hold one side with my thumb and just snip through the threads as I go. And once you've taken a few seams out, you can start to get access to the inside of the jacket. So this here is one of the massive shoulder pads that this jacket has. It's always interesting seeing the construction of a mass-produced garment and where corners may have been cut. Marks and Spencer's garments tend to be better made. They tend to have slightly more traditional techniques in there and they tend to have more natural fibres. Not always. I mean, this looks like it might actually be cotton batting with a wool felt rather than your generic polyester fibre sew on shoulder pads. So that's nice to see. And there's going down, you can see there's some interfacing in here which is in black rather than white, which means it won't show through on your lining. And then you can see that there's what gets called horsehair canvas sometimes. Um, this is for the, the front of the jacket here. So this is your breast pocket and this just helps keep everything smooth. On a cheaper jacket you tend not to get these elements in there and that's why sometimes, although on the surface the more expensive jackets don't seem to be that much better, you end up with a nicer finish, so they look nicer for a lot longer, they don't seem to wear out so quickly. I'm, I'm going to continue doing this off camera, I can't imagine you seeing me unpick this on camera is going to be that riveting, and I shall bring you back when I have this all taken to bits. I have the jacket dismantled as far as I need to take it now. I have almost all the pieces apart, the only exception is the front panels here because the seam goes right through that pocket, which I was hoping to reuse. I've encountered some challenges with this that I wasn't expecting. Now, the main thing, of course, is the moth damage. I've just put some paper underneath so that you can see just how bad some of it is. This panel here, one of the sleeves, is almost unusable. This one has a Massive nibble in it there. On one of the front panels, there's more damage. 
that's the biggest hole and on the corresponding rear panel there's more damage there so there's quite a bit of fabric that I can't actually use because it has holes in it. The next problem I'm having with these pattern pieces if you like is layout. This is my waistcoat pattern front and you can see it fits. There's enough material there, arguably, to put that in. Until you realise why there isn't. Now, I can't put this this way round. Well, I can on this section, but on the other side of the jacket there's a breast pocket around here, so I can't use the whole piece on the mirror. This one, we've got the big pocket here, and we've got this seam here, and I have to work around those. The other issue is this is the pocket line on the pattern. On the pattern, there's the pocket line here, which is at an angle on the original pattern. For what this is, I could straighten that out rather than having it on an angle. It would probably work. The problem comes when you line up the two edges of the pocket there with this pocket here. It's that much wider, two fingers width wider. Additionally, if I want this pocket in about the right place, well, instantly we have problems because the arm cutout cuts into the front of the waistcoat pattern. So, okay, we'll switch the pattern over. A bit trickier to find out where the pocket is. And it fits better but now, because of this seam that runs down the front of the jacket, I'm going to have problems in this area because this fabric's the wrong shape. I think the only answer to this is going to be patchworking. I'm going to have to have a little bit of a think and a little bit of a plan about how I'm going to make these various pieces I've got fit this pattern. Because this is the only piece of the jacket that fits the pattern in one go. Every other piece is too small, or has an interruption with a pocket, or you know a seam, or something like that. Here's the two pattern pieces that I'm working with. The first thing I did was straighten out where the pocket line goes. On this one you can see it sits at an angle that basically follows this line. I can't do that on the new one because of my fabric limits, especially if I'm wanting to reuse the existing pocket. So I've had to straighten that out and move that up. This also means that I need to change the bottom line of the waistcoat because otherwise this is going to look a bit strange. It won't match up with the other lines of the waistcoat. So I've straightened the bottom edge, not completely, it still has a bit of a taper to it towards the front because, well, the shape of your body means that you don't want it completely straight across the front. And that should make this pocket make a bit more sense. These lines up here are where I need to cut some pieces. I had a look at the various options. I did consider doing um, a hexagon pattern, so the whole thing in little tweed hexagons. The trouble is the accuracy that you need to make a pattern like that work is quite high and this tweed fabric being quite lightweight is very mobile and it's wool so it's not really well suited to that level of accuracy. And I realised if I just use a sunburst pattern, it should both be a, a nice design for the shape of the waistcoat and I can make this very, very flat when I've sewn it all together. It's fairly easy to make this accurate. So I don't need to worry about the pattern shifting or the fabric moving. These are just straight lines. This is the bit that takes you the time. When you're reusing a garment and you're working within its limitations, this stage, yeah, this, it's important, but it can eat up a lot of your time. These are the only pattern pieces we need for this waistcoat. I've cut all of these out so you can see where the lines are. This is the backing that I made last time. There's no need to change any of that, it works fine. And of course, I'll put a ribbon on the back as I did before, just to do as a waist cincher. 
For now, I'm going to have a rummage and see what I've got as lining material. I can't use the lining off the jacket, there simply isn't enough, but I should have something else in stock. All of my pattern pieces cut out and ready to sew. The only issue I had is this blue fabric here, I didn't have enough. I wanted to use something that would work with the outside, and I don't use blue very often. And this was the only blue lining material I've actually got in stock. There was enough to do the outside and the ribbon, but not enough to do the inside. Luckily, I did have this brown satin, which also goes with the blue tweed, but not quite as well. So I've used that for the lining front and back, and then the blue will be what's on show with the adjuster strap on the back. I'm going to have to be careful when I sew this together. These pattern pieces are all very similar. I'm going to pin all of this together and pop it on the mannequin so we get our first look at how this actually looks for real instead of how it looks in my head. Oh yeah, I should have mentioned, I didn't do a mock-up for this. I'm being a little bit overconfident, perhaps. We'll see. Have all the pattern pieces cut out and pinned together. I've not sewn any of this yet. That's why these lines are a bit wiggly. When this is sewn, these will be nice and straight. Well, hopefully. Also, when it's pressed, things like this popping out, that won't happen because it won't be able to. You can, if you know what you're looking at, tell that this used to be a jacket. And I don't mind that. One thing has surprised me. I thought these pockets would look much too large. As it is, they maybe sit a little bit further back than I'd like, but they don't seem oversized for what the waistcoat is. And I think one of the things that's helping with that is the bottom line here is in line with the pocket. Well, well it's ever so slightly off, but when you look at it, it looks right. The vertical lines that were the darts and the shaping on the front of the jacket, they do give a little bit more shape to the front of this than I would normally put in. Um, but I think it worked quite well. I do like this design on the top and when I actually laid out the pattern pieces I got all of this out of the two back panels of the coat and didn't have to go into any of the moth damaged areas which was brilliant so I actually have some of this tweed left over for a future project. Now it hasn't gone without a hiccup this blue fabric up here, this is going to be the adjustment strap. That was the best colour lining material I had in stock. I didn't particularly want to go out and buy more fabric for this project. I wanted to use what I've got. But blue is a colour I very rarely use because, honestly, blue doesn't really suit me that well. However, this matches the colour of the waistcoat the best out of the fabrics I've got and I had enough to do the back and the adjustment belt and nothing else. So for the lining, I used some brown satin that I've got. It's just a polyester satin, it's nothing fancy. It does work with the blue and I could have used this for the whole thing, but that quilted blue fabric on the back, it just matches a bit better. So I've used this on the whole lining. You wouldn't normally mix and match your exterior and your interior like that. But I think I'll get away with it on this one because you're not going to see this lining unless it's as a whole. So it should be okay. The other thing I'll be putting on this are some fairly large buttons. They'll probably be larger than the ones on this waistcoat. Because there's so much gap between the pocket and the front of the coat there, well, what was the front of the coat, it's going to need something to fill that up, but I'm going to go for something fairly plain. Originally, the buttons on this were plastic imitation horn buttons. You know the sort, they're ever so slightly transparent in places that have swirly bits of white and cream in them. They're supposed to look like horn buttons, and they sort of do. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with something along those lines, a plain, probably grey or slate blue kind of button. This fabric's an odd colour. It is blue, but it's also got green and gold and brown in it. 
so it matches quite a few things, but that can make it tricky for button choice. One thing to be aware of when you're sewing a patchwork garment like this is you need to sew all of your pieces that make up one pattern piece and then you may need to trim the edges. For the buttons on this I'm going to use something fairly plain. The buttons I used on this waistcoat they're quite showy but it's velvet so that works. This one I don't want the attention on the buttons I want it on this detail at the top here. So I'm going to go with something that's probably grey or blue-ish that will blend in. Slightly larger to compensate for the fact that this pocket sits a bit further back than I'd really like. And that should help fill this gap up. It shouldn't take me too long to put this together, providing my cutting's been accurate and providing everything goes to plan. My only problem is, I don't really have anything in the wardrobe that matches this. I guess I'll have to make some more things. Previously you saw this mocked up, so all these lines were all wiggly. I've now sewn these down and I've pressed the back open. I did consider top stitching but it looks fine as it is, I actually quite like it. The next thing I did on this was I laid the tweed piece that's got the patchwork onto the satin lining just to make sure everything was the same size. There was a little bit of trimming around the armholes and that sort of thing. Sometimes when you do this kind of patchwork it can just stretch the shape of the pattern out a little bit and you need to correct. As long as you make sure you do that everything should then go together no problem. I'm now going to be sewing the outer and the inners together so then I can sew the whole thing together. But I also need to do the pockets because at the moment these pockets are full jacket sized pockets, they're much too large. So what I need to do is sew along the bottom edge of these just so they fit into what's actually available in the waistcoat. That will just make them look a bit better. I've got a few bits done now. I've got the waist strap in place, just needs a press. And I've got the side seam sewn here, again, just need a press. Now it's time to work out the pockets. Now remember originally this was a jacket, so these pockets here, the end of the jacket would have been about here. Of course I've chopped quite a bit off to make this a waistcoat instead. All I shall do is I've got the pocket laid out flat and the waistcoat over the top. I'm going to slice off along this line a little bit higher up like the width of a finger sort of distance and then just re-sew the bottom seam. That's all you need to do. The only thing you ever really put in waistcoat pockets are very small things so they don't need to be any bigger than that. I'm running out of light for today already. I'll have to pick this one up tomorrow. Except I really shouldn't do that because there's no sense of time on YouTube. I'm now at the point where I've got the outer and the inner, which is the brown satin you can just see there, sewn together, ready to be sewn to one another. This is all we had to do with the pockets. You can see it's just a bit shorter than the waistcoat itself, and then I've just trimmed it down and run a seam along the bottom edge. This is now a fully functional pocket that fits inside the waistcoat. There's no need to do any more trimming or anything on that because this is all held inside the garment. I've got these seams to press here and here. The same on the lining which is the brown satin you can see just peeking through there. The adjustment strap on the back which is here just needs a press just to make that sit as it ought to. All of the seams are now pressed and I just have a little bit of hand sewing to do to finish off. There's just the straps at the back here to secure which just stops things pulling out of place. And I just have the buttons to do as well. And obviously the buttonholes. I did find some buttons that I quite liked for this. They match this sort of bluish, greenish, greyish bit of everything really, tweed, quite nicely and they're 
you know, they're a little bit larger than I'd normally go for. I'd normally go for five buttons, but I think they work well enough for what this is. The pockets are not very deep at all. That's all you have. But that would be fine for a pocket watch, and I mean, mostly the pockets on this are just for making it look right rather than actually using. These are the buttons that I've used. They're sort of a I think they're trying to be like a pearl finish, I'm not 100% sure on that. They're quite old, and I've had them in the button stash for a while. They match quite well, um, I was quite pleased about that. I would have liked five, but I think four works. They're on the larger side for a waistcoat. I think they'll work okay for this. <laughs> 